Happy Thanksgiving, friends. Welcome to the Explicit Materia podcast, where a nerdy drummer talks to his friends about anything. And it's not any more apparent than the episode you're about to listen to. <laughs> Christian Hayden returns along with Kyle Lampy to talk about Netflix's Mindhunter, Serial Killers, Christian's Trip to Europe, Fake News, Hollywood Craziness, True Detective, and Bigfoot. We'll throw in some Bigfoot in there. Why the hell not? Uh, remember to rate and subscribe to the podcast, and you can follow my socials if you want. Instagram, at Wise Drums. Twitter, at The Wise Drums. YouTube.com slash Wise Drums. And follow the Explicit Materia Facebook page if you, if you want to. Go ahead. All right, let's just get it on with the podcast. Here we go. Started yet? <laughs> We started. Okay. We started. Did, there's no intro. There's no okay, intro. Guys, I will okay. intru- introduce. Did we have this great conversation last time in which I'm hardly audible? <laughs> no, no, you, you have a hear great. It. You have a great it. speaking voice. Yeah. Oh, well, I appreciate it's, that. It's really nice. It's low, but not too low. Mm. Sure. Still piercing. Not overly gravelly. It's buttery. De- it's a- decades of smoking cigarettes hasn't. <laughs> it's dairy. <laughs> <laughs> That's when it gets like this. Turned my voice into. Similar to like a road in New Orleans or something. Yeah, <laughs> not yet, not yet. It's getting there though. <laughs> what? what uh, didn't, you said you just came. You just got back in town from like out of country. Yeah, I just got back from Europe. What were you doing week, in Europe a week ago? Touring? No, we went to vacation. Well, it it was. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to explain what happened. Um. My girlfriend. Were you arrested? Yeah. Did you get abducted? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I successfully made it into and out of three European countries. Um, there was one night in Estonia where, not really sure how things went down, but they they let me leave the next day. So that was <laughs> no passport issues. Um, we had originally planned to go to Helsinki to go to Finland to see a concert, and who? we had built this whole who. Yeah, who are you um, we were going to go to the House of Culture, which is it's kind of like the Carnegie Hall of Scandinavia. And we were going to see um, several of, of South Africa's great jazz musicians play. Oh, that's awesome. They were going to do a, um, a reunion tour and do this whole thing. And they hadn't played together since 1959. And um, for, for people wondering what, South African jazz musicians, what that means. Um, a number of these guys have worked extensively with Paul Simon and the Graceland and record and all that. So it's cool. Not terribly foreign, but, um, 10 days before we were supposed to leave the, one of the guy, one of the guys got sick and they had to cancel the show. So we ended up with plane tickets. And if you look on a map of the world, Helsinki is like, I mean, it's literally halfway around the world looking (laughs) at a map. Um, And our plan had been to go to Estonia and Latvia and do all that, which we ended up doing. But, you know, we were just kind of standing in the living room going, okay, I guess we're going to go to Europe without any plan (laughs) at all now. Uh, Okay, well, so we just... We booked booked an Airbnb for four nights in Helsinki and then winged the rest of it. And it was totally fantastic. Yeah. Just stay in a hostel. I think that's probably actually more fun. Yeah. You're really just experiencing things with no preconceived notions. You're just like, well, this is Helsinki. And yeah. And and it, it was, it was, it was totally bizarre and amazing. I think definitely, you know, that was my first time to Europe. My, my girlfriend is much more of a world traveler than I've been. And you know, I think most people, right? You go to Paris, you go to London, you go to mm-hmm. you know Barcelona, or things like that. So to go to that part of Europe in those places for the first time was bizarre and mind blowing and everything else. And I think in two weeks we we ran into one American, <laughs> literally ran into. We were at a bar one night, and there was just a lone dude sitting at the end, and he I didn't even ask him what he was doing. I was kind of bummed out. I was like, I don't <laughs> um, but it's a bizarre part of the world, man. You know, Russia's right there, mm-hmm. and and that's a whole thing that we don't really hear about in this country. And um, they're they're Estonia and Latvia in particular are very nervous because of what happened with Ukraine. 
And so there, you wouldn't hear this in the United States, but there, there is 100% kind of like a, um, I don't know what, whatever you call it that we have with North Korea, that whatever that zone is like a no go zone. Yeah. I guess like the, there's right. That crazy border where it's like half the world is like standing there waiting for North Korea. It's like, we have like 10,000 troops there, North mm-hmm. Korean, whatever. Well, Estonia and Latvia have that with Russia mm. and they're literally just waiting. They, <laughs> they are, give me a reason. <laughs> they, well, they're, they're 100% convinced that Putin is going to annex them and take, and take over take, like he did with, uh, Crimea, 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 Crimea. Yeah. And, and, those countries are really intense because, you know, they, they literally went from being under like feudal control with Prussia to being under Nazi control than being under the Soviet Union till 1991. So in, in, in Estonia is, you know, they have Tallinn, which is right there on the bay and it's the old town and it's very, it's like a, a tourist destination for that part of the world, which in itself was really interesting because, you weren't weren't seeing French and British people or anything like that. You know, it was like people from Belarus were like, Talon is where they vacation. So that was really mm. weird. Um, but Latvia, you know, going to the, you know, museum of the occupation and they have this huge statue in the, I guess the, the center of old town where they do this whole military operation every day to, where they do like a changing of the guard. And it's, 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 it's heavy. It's serious stuff. You know, you, you can tell that, um, you know, people our age, their parents, you know, grew up under Soviet control and yeah. they you know, that they had uncles and grandparents and stuff who ended up in, you know, the gulag and all these things. And it's just, it's, it's intense. It's, it's beautiful, but there's this sort of kind of darkness that you feel immediately. And, you know, they kind of look at us and they're like, oh, yeah, you've got Trump. That's funny. Nothing's going to happen to you guys. And they're very much kind of going, yeah, you know, we, we've we been through all kinds of stuff. And, and yeah, we're, it's so we're funny if you really think about again. if you really think about just people complaining about America today yeah. and like, yeah, America has had its fair share of horrible things. We've done some pretty terrible things, especially to minorities in the country. Um, but uh if you really think about it in the grand scheme of things, European countries, they went through some shit in the yeah, past. Yeah, epic stuff. <laughs> like and, epic, and, horrible things happened to them. And it's we have this very skewed perspective, right? Because we're, in theory, we're allies with Russia, right? In theory. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's and, sort of like a tepid friendship. It's a tepid friendship and... and the acquaintances. A, the <laughs> average concept yeah. in this country we'll like, is... Look at each other from across the room and go... So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fren- f- frenemies, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever, whatever next step, I guess the next step from frenemies. You're yeah. Just, you know, you're not. Let me fix your mic real quick. See where it says uh, the newer right there. You want the newer to be where you're talking. There you go. Oh. So, well, you can still angle yourself here. I'll fix it. It's okay. It's all right. I just, I just want to make sure I get your, get all of your beautiful voice. Oh, Good okay. Job, Shane. Okay. Get it together, dude. That 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 makes things save, a lot easier. Save, save the it. save the podcast. Sorry. Uh, Go on. Yeah, so <laughs> we have this kind of oh, we don't you know, Russia's like this and it's that, but you know, we want to have a friendship with them, we want to be cool. Whereas in that part of the world, Russia is one hundred percent evil and has <laughs> killed their family members for years and they are they will do anything to not have their country overrun yeah. again. And, and it's, you know, and then you get to Finland and, and they dislike the Russians so much that they, they drink vodka there, but they call it something else. And it's a very serious thing when you're, you don't call vodka vodka. And then they're very, very serious about what that. What do they call it? Yeah. What do they call it? If it's not, I forget vodka. what it's called. I, this happened a number of times and I could never pronounce it, but they're, we call it the angels drink. <laughs> yeah. They, there's just this <laughs> other thing they, they call it and they have their own brands of vodka that they drink in Finland. And it's, it's just, so they probably don't drink Finlandia vodka. That probably pissed them off. <laughs> it says vodka on it. <laughs> yeah. 
They yeah, and then they have this other drink that's really bizarre. Aren't called, you, isn't your family from Finland? Mm-hmm. Okay, the so Vikings. you know about Finland. Mm-hmm. He's all about my, it. Uh, my but my dad basically. I mean, his dad and <clears throat> my grandma spoke Finnish. Like she taught me how to speak Finnish. I've never been there. I need to go there. It's like it's like that's Mecca. She, it's that's my homeland. She didn't teach you how to speak the whole language. No, she just taught me how to say like bad words and how to count <laughs> and how to. Like, Do you still remember the bad down. words? Like bad for a kid, like how to call your brother ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Not like do fuck. You, or something. Do you still remember how to call your your brother yeah. ugly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Rumaveli. Oh. Rumaveli. Yeah. Uh, and istu means sit, and istu. maitua means milk. <laughs> Ka- katu means street. Yeah. There oh. you go. Like I, did, my grandma's name was Lina, but we called her Aiti. Aiti means like grandma. That's very cute. Yeah. It's a it's a really interesting language because it linguistically, as far as language family go, families go, there are only two other countries in the world that share a similarity, which is Estonia and Hungary, and so it's kind of its own thing. It's very very it's interesting cool. in that respect. It looks cool too, and it's written now. It's what it's like. It's like. Uh, you pronounce every single thing. You know, like we have bomb and comb and lamb. Like you'll never say lamb or bomb. Yeah. There it's like if it's if it's like H I K U K K A H I, you're like hi ho Like you say everything. Really, that's how it should be. I know. What's up with like, the, the silent so letters? Stupid. America's dumb. Why? Why? Why would we have silent letters? It doesn't make people any are so sense. quiet in Finland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Respectful. The people are just so. I remember, you know, we we got back, we landed in Newark, right? And it's this whole, because Nashville's not an international airport yet, so you have to fly somewhere else to mm-hmm. fly out of the country. So it's this whole process. And we landed in Newark, and immediately you're just going, oh my God, everyone's so loud and rude. And I don't know, I mean, it was... Yeah, you know, I was really getting a fist fight with one of the one of the people at the going back through the security who's just so rude to my girlfriend. I'm going, dude, dude yeah, <laughs> give me like what 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 you you know, that's a whole other my I have so many opinions on airports and that whole process. The they uh it's just it's it's completely unbelievable. They make you re go through security and do all this stuff, even though you've been in airports and planes all the way into the United yeah, States. They redo it again. They, that's why they, that's why they want you to do that TSA pre-check thing. It's a, it's amazing. And, and yes, I'm not even going to go there. I have, I airports are the weirdest thing on earth. They are super weird. It's it, the airport is, is just, I don't even know. <sighs> Specifically in in this country, like af, after, you know, like we, we were in Cuba in the spring and you fly in Havana and you go through like a metal detector that no one's really paying any attention to. <laughs> and that's it. You're done. Yeah, like, you know, it's just it's whatever, you know, and you step out onto the street and you get a taxi and you go about your business. Or at least you did now. I don't know. Trump has been messing with a couple of things. I don't <laughs> think you can just go hang out anymore. But <laughs> cavity searches for everyone. Yeah, but here you got nothing to hide. Yeah, you know they they just it's the weirdest thing, and it and it's it's an industry is what it is. Mm-hmm. I don't really think it has anything to do with with safety. with safety and anything like that. I think it's this brilliant way that a lot of people have jobs now. Yeah. Like how much of those body scanners cost the airports? You know, some company made jillions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. I just wonder how, I don't know, man, you watch the whole process and you're almost going, it's almost like people are like playing house or something. It's like, it's make believe. They're like, well, there's this thing on the screen that indicates yeah. this. And we've got this weird swab thing. And you just, I see uh, it. It's like, has anyone yeah. really checked to see if anything's going on here? Or is this just like a whole, I really want to know of stuff? what they, what they're trained to see when your bag goes through the, the, if it's, the, if it's not, blatantly a gun or like a clock strapped to some stick of dynamite that's it's fine it's fine <laughs> because I, yeah. I've, I've spotted the screens it's when just, i go through there a little know. bit and i i just see jumbles of colors i know i don't that's know. all i see they might have some secret thing or it might just be there to make you feel safe because i've definitely 
like we know you're not supposed to bring liquids on or whatever. Yeah. Well, I've that's how I've just brought it through. Like it didn't stop me. Like what if I was the one that had like liquid glycerin or nitroglycerin? Yeah. Like, I uh, boom, I accidentally left dead. a bottle of whiskey, like a big 750 milliliter bottle. Yeah. Oh wow! Uh, and I forgot it was in my bag, and I didn't realize it until I got back from the airport. Mm-hmm. So I got through the terminal. Just fine, no stops or anything. Sure, with it, it's in my backpack, so mm-hmm. my backpack went through the thing. Totally fine. Didn't realize it till I got home. And I, oh wow, I just went through security with this giant bottle yeah. of brown liquid. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I just want to see all the three D scans of my wiener that they have in a hard drive somewhere. You know. Well, there's. <laughs> I just want to know what it looks like in three D. There's a. There's a. You mean YouTube. not in real life? You don't see your dick no, but the, in three. No, but the rendering of me doing this. <laughs> I don't think it works, man, because you don't have a bone in there. Yeah. Well, I guess you do have it, right? It's like some sort of sort of bone in your wiener. Yeah. Right. Well, they have to. They have to see if you're hiding anything underneath your 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 testicular region, right? Yeah. So. But I but remember when body scanners first came out, people were like super weirded out because you could get a naked 3D image of your body, and people were like, "How dare you can't have that." But now everyone's like, oh, whatever, just trying to look at it. I just Convenience just beats everything. I don't. Convenience yeah. beats everything. It really does. It's 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 sad. It's, but yeah. remember remember in uh, that that old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Total Recall. Do you remember that scene where he's dressed as a giant woman and he's two weeks? Yeah, two, two weeks. weeks. And that she just starts freaking out. That scared me as a kid. By the way, I hated that scene. But he goes through the the x-ray thing mm-hmm. and that special effect they do all you see is skeletons fighting yeah I thought that was pretty cool that was really cool that's the way it, it probably should looks be terrible now <laughs> <laughs> and the girl with the three boobs oh yeah i don't think i've ever seen this movie oh man what yeah what, what is it dude total recall total recall yeah, that's great. i've i've heard of it with arnold arnold like if you it's one of those movies that you watch and then you you go oh that's what everyone was H- talking have about. you ever seen pumping iron yeah mm-hmm. his like documentary, documentary. It's so good it's dude so good. <laughs> that is just he's crazy he's he's just uh, there's there's a lot of stuff happening in that movie <laughs> there's just a lot of things that are that are that are going on how many actors do you think are on steroids hugh jackman's got to be on steroids yeah you can't be 50 whatever years old and look like a 24 year old Better than a twenty-four year old. Yeah, no, you have to. It's or just, The Rock. The kinda, Rock's got to be. Doing you kind of look man. like Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'll take that as a compliment. He's a handsome man. He is it. Well, you know, you are. You're a handsome man. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, thank you. regardless of whether you look like Hugh Jackman, you would qualify as a handsome man. <laughs> the only thing that differs you two is he has adamantium bones, <laughs> of course, and you don't. And That's I do not. Shame. Who's going to be the next Wolverine? That's what I want to know. Nobody. That's like. He's, I feel bad of, for the next actor. That's one of those roles where he is that role. You just can't stop. That'd be like trying to get a new Luke Skywalker. It's like, just don't. My my knowledge and familiarity with Hugh Jackman begins and ends with whatever that movie in Australia was he did with Nicole Kidman. What was that? I forget what it's called. I don't think it was very successful, but it was a kind Sounds of Sounds cool like it movie. was a dud. Yeah. Because <laughs> I forget what it's called. Was it a uh, drama? A drama? I guess it, it was, yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you see the new Deadpool trailer? There's a new one? New the one? new one, new one. No, I oh, dude. You, I'm going to so give excited. you guys a little, little Were you tidbit. ever into comic books growing up? I'm, no. No. I, I, was, I was big into like skateboarding and BMXing. Yeah. And just like being, being, being outside, outside was, was the thing. I miss those days. It would weird me out if I saw kids playing outside now. When was the last time you saw kids just like outside? I when you're think, driving in the street, do you see anyone outside their I house anymore? I don't think anymore? people do that. <laughs> no one goes outside anymore. It's 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 a shame. I, I I think maybe they do. It's just that it's yeah. I don't, I don't I, see them. I don't know. I remember like I you know I'm a, I have a little brother who's who's 17 and like I think about how he's been raised and sort of how yeah his whole situation is and I mean I was like just like a total wild kid you know like mm-hmm. I would remember being five years old and taking off on my bike and 
Yeah. And your parents and were like, like oh, no I guess one I'll come really back. thought anything about it if till I got home eight hours later. Mm-hmm. You know, it just wasn't a thing. And well, it was a different world back then too. I I I guess I right? Was it? Is it? I don't know. I'm gonna what? I think it was. Like I because I remember doing that too. I would just be like, All right, mom, I'm gonna like bike to Shane's house, which was I had to leave. I had to cross a big major street. I had to like Right. Cool. Yeah, it's there's it's, no cell phone. It's not like I could check in with them. It was just yeah. I mean, back then, I mean, it was like you know, everyone's parents knew each other, right? So there was mm-hmm. that. That was like the network. They're like, oh yeah, he was just here eating pizza, and they took off and did this. Yeah. You know, oh okay, cool. So somebody saw the kids within the past hour. You know, mm-hmm. and that was that. They haven't been abducted yet. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But that's another thing too, right? Like. You don't really hear about that anymore, like, like, like stranger kidnappings stuff and ad- abductions. I think kids are. I think because of the information age of the internet, kids are smarter now. Because I definitely, I mean, my parents always told me like, or there just aren't any kids out for abduction. Yeah, maybe like kids just aren't like you, no one's getting abduct- yeah. abducted from their living room playing yeah. playing a video game. That's true. Yeah, you can't really. That'd be a breaking and entering. Yeah, it's not an abduction anymore. Yeah, or that's a double charge. Yeah, you only go for the singles, not the doubles. Right. I don't know. But isn't wasn't the '90s like when the child abduction thing like really started to happen, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, like that's when all the PSAs would come out about like, do you know where your kids are? <laughs> and and the, and the milk. That's when the milk. The face. Are you talking about milk. that documentary? No, we're just talking about like there's growing a, up as a kid, and now there's there's uh you just don't see people playing outside anymore. There's a documentary on the 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 first kid that was. Put on a milk carton. Well, oh, what's the oh, Where's Netflix. Johnny? Yeah, where's where's Johnny? Johnny? yeah, I saw that. Still missing to this day. Well, he's because he's dead. It's, <laughs> I mean, that but, was back in the seventies. No, it was really 80s. crazy because the documentary was kind of focused on this just child abduction ring here in the United mm-hmm. States, and one reporter got pretty close into finding a, some weird things that was going on. That are still unexplained, of course, but, and, you know, kind of pointing to some sort of cover up within. You, you know what it reminds me of is uh, what I believe to be the greatest season of television in history. Now, this is coming from somebody with very, as I've said before, I'm not, I'm not a comic book yeah, movie. I can't, I can't wait to hear this guy. However, and I'm just say I'm just talking the first season, yeah. not the rest of it. I guess we're on the third season now. True Detective first season. Oh, True Detective first season is one of the greatest, greatest television human accomplishments ever. <laughs> greatest, greatest. In my opinion, it is someone with very limited knowledge of any of these things. Yeah, I think it's one hundred percent amazing. Based off of a true story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, child abduction ring. Yeah, that was the real was incredible heart of season. that incredible season. whole thing. What? Uh, yeah. And What's then, season three? Is it even good? Se- I don't oh, know. No. Season, oh, season two was in se- L.A. Season three hasn't even started yet. Oh, you know what? Season three probably is going to be cool because it takes place in the Ozarks. Oh, wow. That's a popular spot. Yeah. With the the I've Ozark got a fa- show. I, I, I'm fascinated by the Ozarks. That's a we strange place. I know nothing about it. I actually have the, the show Ozark. Is that like the same thing? Queued up in yeah, my yeah. Netflix? Yeah. And that first season is actually really great, too. Oh, okay. What's the Ozarks? What is that? It's a it's a it's a mountain range that is it it's in Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and like a tiny portion of Kansas, I believe. Okay, and it's very very rural and kind of its own thing. It's okay. it's pretty weird. Yeah. Um, I think True Detective season two was the worst season of television. <laughs> that's, Did you see that, season two? I saw, I, I was so enamored with, you know, and that's it's like my buddy who's in the film industry was like, we got to watch true detective season one. So I, I have to have my hand held for these things. I'll never sit down and watch yeah. any of this stuff unless somebody's like, let's do this. And so we started, I don't know, right. Colin Farrell is in the second season. Mm hmm. Yeah, it had a pretty top build cast. Yeah, it's seen, uh, Rachel seen, McAdams, and, McAdams and uh, homeboy from Wedding Crashers. What's his name? Oh God, what? 
<laughs> what, what, he was he, why are we t- blanking on it? Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, yeah. Vince Vaughn. Getting old, getting old. Yeah. Vince Vaughn. I, you know, I think I watched one episode a while ago. I don't really remember. I mean, man, that like the McConaughey Harrelson thing was just. <laughs> yeah. It's unbeatable. Uh, it, it was just. They're like the perfect team. They're the perfect team. The thing is, is like, like Woody's a, Woody's a dark guy. Mm-hmm. Like he's got a dark, like you guys know about his dad and stuff, right? No, Mm-mm. his dad's on death row, or I think he died, but he was on he was like on death row for years for being a murderer in real what? life. Yeah, convicted Shit. Woody Harrelson. Yeah, damn. Oops. So I guess having that knowledge and right, you see him in Natural Born Killers and some of these other things. Oh. You're just going, what's he channeling to play? Those yeah, characters? right. Yeah. Like there's like it's like he's not super far removed from. I guess that kind yeah. of real he life. He definitely darkness. did not channel that character on Will and Grace. <laughs> yeah. He was on Will and Grace for a bit. I didn't know he that. He was hilarious. Well, he he didn't get a start on uh, Cheers. in uh, Cheers. He's just a great actor. I mean, he's fantastic he's, and yeah. he's aged really well. If you if you look at him back then, he hasn't really he's what 50s now. What's that other something? he's in the, there's another movie Z- Zombie Land? Yes. Yeah. Great. great. Oh great. my god, I guess I know a little bit more about yeah. movies than I thought. Um that that scene where he's just driving around drinking whiskey <laughs> it's so good so good i mean what else are you gonna do and like like that kid or something gets in the car and kind of looks at him like you know you're drinking and driving and he's like w- and that matters yeah, now yeah, because, yeah, because. Uh, <laughs> what just, you know it's just like such a great all moment the cops in movie. are zombies <laughs> yeah there's not really who am i gonna hit a zombie yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, back to the well, sort of comic booky type. Of, I meant to show you guys this trailer. Mm, yes, yes, yes. And it's it's classic Deadpool. Deadpool or Punisher? Oh, it's Deadpool. Deadpool. Oh, I thought you said talking about Punisher. No. Oh God. Yes. Soylent Green. Whoa. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I love how it changes every time. That's going to be so good. That's totally phenomenal. Wow. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> just going okay. to whack, whack off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what a great movie. Have you seen the first one? No. You need I'm, to see I, it. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm into it now. That was hilarious. That yeah, was really great. The first great. It's like, as far as superheroes movie movies go, it's like they did it the right way. Because, you know, these superheroes... A lot of them have weapons, and in all these superhero movies, no one's like dying or getting cut up or shot. But in Deadpool, I mean, he has two samurai swords and two like handguns. People are dying left and right. Like that's what would happen. I'm into it. I'm yeah. into it. Their viral campaign is just brilliant too. That's what I'm most excited about. The lead up to this movie yeah. is the little tidbits they'll put on YouTube of just. Just Ryan Reynolds just being a genius. He's the perfect guy to play Deadpool. Because Deadpool in the comic books is like this 
cocky asshole. He, he can't die, and he knows that, so he just like, and he's like just giving up on life, and he knows he's just like this bad, good superhero. So he's just like everything's just like fuck it. I just don't. Yeah, uh, Marvel created him, and and this kind of is this, he turned into this comical figure where he kind of breaks the fourth wall. And so he continually talks to the audience in the comics and he does it in the movie. Yeah. And so oh, that's very which cool. is great awesome. because the, all the the whole movie is nothing but meta humor. Mm-hmm. And so you don't take it seriously. Right. But there are serious moments and it just it you having a fun ride. Yeah, it's great. It's it's my favorite of the superhero franchise for sure. Okay. I'll have to I'll have to watch all this stuff. Mm-hmm. If you enjoy some action, some love, and a lot of comedy, you'll enjoy Deadpool. I love to laugh. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, then you'll love it. Is this still? Am I? I don't think you're in the in the shot, bro. I think you're just way out of scene there. Now I just look insane. His <laughs> voice. <laughs> That's kind of fun, though. Yeah. <laughs> Are you <laughs> you're, especially when you left. are you breaking the fourth wall yeah, right now? I'm just like looking. Have I forced you into a fourth wall interaction? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited for that movie, and we I just started watching Mindhunter. We talked about it when we went to lunch. Well, the third episode, dude. God. Really interesting show. Mindhunter is about the FBI in the late 70s mm-hmm. or early 70s. Okay. Um, I just started watching The Americans. Oh, I've heard that's good. Yeah, yeah, I I guess. It's It's about two Russians who were grown up as spies as children here in America, right? Kind of. They're... I'll have to... I don't know. I'll have to... I think I'd probably just need to watch it again because there was definitely some... kind of obvious stuff in it that's sort of like okay all right duh of course that would happen and that's Mm -hmm. why this is going to make sense moving forward you know it was a it was a little more obvious than i would have liked it to have been Ah. i guess is what i'm getting at um you know so that having just been in two former soviet countries it's kind of like Okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but Mindhunter is cool because it focuses on the FBI trying to really get down in the psychology of serial killers because they don't they didn't coin the term yet. They haven't coined the term. It's like before. They, it's like before the serial killer was like a thing. Really? Yeah. It's when they they actually stopped looking at it as like oh people are just inherently bad. They actually started to think well maybe it's their circumstance or things that happen to them. Maybe it's, it's really just a, a sickness in their mind and it's not that they're just monsters. So they start to like, it's the first time people started to think of psychology right. linking to crime. It's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. If you're into like serial killers and like uh, psychology things. Yeah. Yeah. And this, the, so you're on episode three. We don't really have that anymore either, right? Serial mm-hmm. killers. Like when was the last yeah. like real, I think it was the Beltway sniper, wasn't it? That was the last yeah, time. but can you? Like 15 people is that really serial? That's I feel like that's a different thing. Yeah, that's more that kind of curbs the line of uh, terrorism. Really, yeah, we have terrorism now. That's the new serial killer. Yeah, and I, yeah, I actually had that. I, I actually talked about that. I forget like that. That is the new serial killer. They're like the new rock stars. Everyone wants to be a terrorist now because you get your your in Time magazine. Yeah, it's I crazy. mean, if you do have the tendency and want to kill people, like why? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. you know. Back in the 90s, your one-way ticket to fame is to be a serial killer and have this ritualistic kind of thing. But now it's, oh, I'm just going to be a terrorist instead. Yeah, it's so great. Yeah, when was the last time we had like a like a Ted Bundy? Or yeah, like I feel Dom like the, the last like real... It was Dahmer. That was the 80s. Da- no, Dahmer. I, would, I feel like the Unabomber could like yeah. fall into that category. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he only did it... Well, yeah, he did it a couple times. That's right. That, do you remember watching that play out? That was insane. That was crazy. Ted Kaczynski and uh-huh. living in the the shack, and they, yeah. you know, he. But that that he he was like, I feel like he was the connector between a serial killer and a terrorist because he he wasn't personally killing his victims like Dahmer and stuff. He was like personally one on one with them, like putting their body parts and keeping them, and like yeah. being a creep with their bodies. Where he's just kind of like. He's killing a lot of people, but he's hands off in, in the. It is, he's like he had like a genius plan. That was crazy. I can't yeah, that but that's happened. thing. Yeah. That's the thing too. Is that like 
that was really like Dahmer was like, okay, you're just a sick lunatic yeah. and that's mm-hmm. that and whatever else. And, and the psychology behind him didn't go as deep, but Ted Kaczynski, yeah, he was, was like, he was, he was like a former Stanford professor yeah. and was like a, like a, a math, like a total crazy mathematical genius. Mm-hmm. And they would do, uh, I remember watching, you know, cause he was under all this crazy observation. They were like, well, we have to sentence this guy, but we also, like it just turned into this whole other thing, like examining his mind and yeah, figuring like, out what it was. It was like having the evil, wicked Einstein or something in custody. Yeah, that's what's great about that show, Mindhunter, is they start to realize that these, they kind of coined the term serial, but they said sequence killers. These sequence killers are extremely intelligent. Right. And it kind of is like a... They just use a it in mind, a different way. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, so here's... Here's the other thing. I, I I was really fascinated by the Ted Kaczynski mm-hmm. thing because I it just you know you know when you're looking at something where you know that you're just not smart enough to totally get exactly what's happening and you become fascinated by it. That's how that was. And the one thing I remember is that somebody who was part of the investigation and they were bringing all these outside sources because it was like it became very apparent that there was a there was math behind what he did. Yeah. And somebody, and I'll have to go back and do the research on this because I'm mixing up some of my information, but the gist of it is that somebody kind of put on the table that they thought it might be worth investigating the connection between the Unabomber and the Zodiac killer. Mm. And they, to this day, it's kind of hard. To, I mean, that just, it's kind of 50, 50, you know, it was very likely that he, it may have been the same person because of the math, just the math and the planning and just kind of everything it's that true, was involved. They, haven't found, they don't know the Zodiac killer is still to this day. They have, they have like, uh, theories or whatever, but did you ever watch that movie? Yeah. The real one? Like no, the, no one? the movie Zodiac. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, Jake John uh-huh. Hull. That was a good movie. It's a fucking scary home. movie. It was, it was dude. A good what movie. a scary dude. Ugh. Oh yeah. Yeah, the whole sending the letters to the to the newspapers and stuff. And like then you have them about to, yeah. And, and sending uh ciphers yeah. and stuff. Little riddles and codes. You have to break the code. That was before right before we were born, right? Yeah, I think so. That would have been crazy to be alive for too. Like you see the cipher in the paper the next day and you're like, oh Jesus. Yeah, and, and he purposely like he knew he knew who was working on his case mm-hmm. and he knew and he like people were freaked out about I'd that be man too. that was crazy because he started to hunt like the law enforcement mm-hmm. that was his whole thing was that he was a serial killer but he was also you know you know it's he like would touchable he would throw out facts about the mayor <laughs> and the district attorney and the chief of police and and you know people were just Kind of, kind of every bluff was called, you know, I mean, it was pretty, pretty mind blowing. Now, you know, we're 45 years or however many years away from it. Right. I think the the killing started in the sixties, something like that. Yeah. And are they, just, like, are they stopped. linked? They identified him in the seven seventies, but I think they were, they were able to go back as far as the late fifties, if I'm correct. And they sort of well, linked all this stuff together. Dude. How is it? How is it's it? fascinating. I don't think it's, you could do that today. Like, I think evidence is like is so, and everyone has is like a phone in their pocket. They can catch things on camera. There's there's ways to look at people's like profiles and like figure out who people are through the internet. You'd think, right? Yeah, I don't think maybe that's why there's no serial killers anymore because everyone knows who got caught. I, I I don't I don't know. I mean, I think that I think I think that you can you can get away with anything if you if you have enough brain power to do it i but feel do you like really have you ever watched that show forensic files yeah it's a show that's just on it's on the uh, whatever crime channel and right. they have it just marathoning for the whole day yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh we used to fall asleep to it uh, me and my wife because the the narrator 
his voice is so beautiful, yet he's talking about these horrific events, and we just fall asleep to his beautiful yeah. voice. Um, anyway, uh, it's just when you watch that show, how can you get away with murder? Because there are some sciences on there where they, they break down how they particles of like skin that they can just pick up off the floor and there are there are sciences out there that can catch who's been in that room yeah well i always think about this like <clears throat> tonight i get in my car i drive out to cookville tennessee in the middle of nowhere just just because and i pick the first house i see and i see it's like a little lady watching tv just mind her own business i kick the door and shoot her get my car and drive back like no motive i don't know this person at all it's in the middle of the night like would I get caught? Would I get caught? I'm not connected to that town, that city, her the, all. Well, you might be. Yeah. Okay, I you mean, just said you broke down the door, right? Yeah. You kicked down the door? Yeah. Let's say your shoe left a footprint. Yeah, that's true. And they can but trace back. Shoe. And what they'll do is they'll find what kind of shoe that is. They'll find out. Uh, but so many, but thousands of people have these shoes. It's true. I know. And will they look at tire markings? I, I'm just saying, tire I think marks. It, would be, it would be highly, it'd be a lot harder to, it's, I think it's a lot harder to find someone if there's no motive. It is just like a, just yeah, a random. For sure. Because it wasn't a crime of passion. I didn't know her. It wasn't like I got fired from my job. So that's, I killed everyone. That's why well, they say the first yeah. 48 hours are very integral I into show, catching. <laughs> it's a fantastic show. It's a great show. I love that show. But you're right. The, but that's the truth, though. I mean, that's why serial killers are so successful is because you can't figure out any motive mm -hmm. if there's a motive it's their own psychological issue yeah but that doesn't make any is sense. a blanket kind of concept you know what i mean right so but i yeah I, I don't know it's fascinating we don't i mean i guess it's a good it's a it's a good thing right we live in a world where there aren't a bunch of serial killers running around no, yeah just, i'm not i'm not I'm just, I'm just not like where have all the good serial How, killers however on the flip <laughs> side i'm pretty sure that you know if you just take the amount of shootings in the past two years, that probably covers all the, all the serial killers killings ever, that have yeah. ever happened times however much. True that. So, true that. I mean... I think I'd rather I, have some serial killers I back I think about terrorists. this, too. What if... This is completely bro science, so you forgive me if this sounds... Bro theory, science? Bro science. Do you it's, want to elaborate term. on that for me? <clears throat> bro, bro science, science is just... Is that just like, is that your own like theory and you're the, not a scientist at all? You're just, just some dude. Up. You're just some you're dude. You're just a bro with some, just some. What if the serial killer gene or the thing that makes a serial killer, whatever, ha <clears throat> whatever that is. It's gluten. Is, is it gluten? <laughs> it's just your <laughs> wheat intolerance. It's 100% gluten. Yeah. <laughs> um, if there weren't so many gluten-free dough situations in the world, yeah, there'd be a lot more serial killers. No. So thank you, Nabisco. Nabisco. <laughs> Twinkies. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Whole Foods. <laughs> Fighting crime. Saving us. One gluten-free roll of yeah, bread yeah. at a time. <laughs> what if the serial killer gene is something that we had when we were in tribes and we were warriors? And what if the that warrior who had that gene was able to just kill without any sort of empathy? Because you kind of need that yeah. if you are the warrior the the bloodthirsty killer of your tribe you need that dude yeah, to but take out have, the other tribe yeah but did they have boners while they did it did they go back and okay, have sex well, with the dead bodies that they killed i don't know i'm just saying what and maybe the i'm not saying i don't know it was just a weird theory i had hey, is you, you need to have some sort of something in order to turn you into someone that has no empathy when you're mutilating somebody yeah i i mean oftentimes you know, the, the two psychological traits that are extraordinarily prevalent in serial killers and people like that is you, you have sociopaths and you have narcissists. Yeah. So you have somebody who is oftentimes obsessed with themselves and what they're doing while being in, while lacking any sort of empathy, which is a very scary combination. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a, wow. You know, um, so I I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess there's the possibility that, you know, we've maybe we're evolving out of that type of thing. But at the same time, I mean, I, I, I don't, it's, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I think that, you know, right. Like somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer's and all of its horrificness, it is kind of an extraordinary thing. Yeah. 
You know, it's an extraordinary feat of evil. And the same thing with the Zodiac and the same thing with the Unabomber. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it is kind of, it, it's sort of an amazing thing that these people do exist and they're able to accomplish this stuff and, and scare people so badly and get inside your head and whatever. But yeah, I don't, maybe, maybe people are just becoming more, more dumb and, you know, so it, it's, there's not the brain power behind being a, being a serial, serial killer, killer like that, just like you know? be on Snapchat and say, <laughs> the snapchat killer yeah <laughs> but that's the thing though right i mean you have to figure that you know obviously we never caught the zodiac killer and i don't know how, where how much research we did into jeffrey dahmer's brain yeah, but yeah. we we do know that the unabomber is one of the smartest people that ever lived i you know, know what i mean yeah. so that's it's just crazy that he was so bad that's and i think that's probably a fairly common thing, you know, I mean, H H Holmes and these people, I mean, yeah. there's no doubt that these people were extremely intelligent. Yeah. H um, H Holmes like built a house full of booby traps, like a hotel, crazy. wasn't it during yeah, the world he, fair? Yeah. He and just like figured 20s, out he created this whole, and I don't think he ever got caught either. Did no, he? Uh -uh. I don't, I don't think maybe he turned well, people, himself in. I don't know. People I can't remember missing. Yeah, back then, if people just went missing, people didn't think anything of it. Well, yeah, it's not like it's not like if you tra traveled to go to that World Fair thing in like the nineteen nineteen or whatever that you were calling your parents to let you know that you got there. You're just like, oh, I'm going to this thing. I'll see you later. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I like go back to that point. I think it'd be really, it's really hard to get away with a crime these days because everyone's so connected to each other constantly. Yeah, which is a scary thing, right? I mean, do you think that people actually? like want to do stuff but they go oh, there's no way i'll get away with it yeah, Mo like, yeah moving on you know do you think that's a thing or is to really be a killer it is a lack like you don't care you're just you're well, gonna I do think it everyone has that side because we are just animals like you've never been so mad that you really wanted to kill somebody some before or thought about it or <laughs> even if it was a split second maybe you didn't really you weren't really gonna do it but in your mind you were like man i could kill this person You've been that mad before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was younger, for sure, because you don't yeah. know how to handle that rage. But that's but, the difference between you and a sociopath. Is right. Like, you, you, you understand the reper repercussions of killing someone. Them, it's like the same as like eating a grape. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they certainly or get a to human that point. brain. You yeah. know, eating a grape, eating mm -hmm. a human brain, you know, either or. What's like, scary about the whole thing is it's... We look at serial killers like Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy and all those people, and we, we it's easy for us to classify them as monsters because they're, you know, they're inhuman. Mm -hmm. But right. the scary thing is, is that thing, that monster could have been any one of us. Yeah, well, a lot of Because them we're all abused. human. We yeah. all have that, it, we, it, we're products of our environment, right? Mm -hmm. What Something happened in that kid's life that, triggered something to turn him into something right yeah most of them have like the same kind of story like they were neglected or they were severely abused except for jeffrey dahmer except for jo uh, Je to my knowledge he had a happy life his his family loved him and uh, well that's his parents fault for not maybe thinking there was something wrong when he was killing cats and reassembling yeah, right. their bones to he just did right. it he just yeah. never got caught and so maybe it is a oh, negligence jeffrey you're so creative <laughs> oh yeah mom check out this wow. new man. What a, what, a neat, what a neat animal puzzle you've wow, made. Wow, Jeffrey. Anyways. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a frightening thought. It's even more frightening to think that we're just society as a whole is just cannon fodder. Really think about it. We're just all nice. We all want to get along with each other. 90% yeah. of us, 99%. But 1% of 300 million is what, 10,000? Yeah. 10,000 people who are just crazy that's a lot of people if you think about it i think it'd be i know you could never do this morally maybe if like cloning became a thing but i think it'd be such a crazy experiment to take two identical people and one child you love and raise and then the other child you like beat and keep in the basement and see <laughs> how they turn out just really see the difference and the exact really, same dna really examine yeah. that <laughs> like, like i know that's so terrible to say 
but obviously you would treat like how much is it nature versus nurture that would that would be a pretty so crazy interesting experiment at on behalf of science but that poor basement killer that one would be the clone (laughs) that one wouldn't have a soul oh okay (laughs) or would it would it i don't know that's a whole another debate isn't a twin isn't it but isn't a twin essentially a clone but they both are humans well yeah but if you clone them from embryos like what's the difference between a test tube baby and a normal birth baby they both are life yeah Mm. maybe it'd have to be some weird ai situation but then it could be programmed what's that like artificial intelligence okay Like if it you was guys like, are such nerds. <laughs> was, oh my gosh. Well, it's, yeah, it's going to be like an AI situation, man. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Right. You know, it's, it's when you, you know, end up like in the matrix floating around in the, spe- the sphere, you know, you end up with an AI. Yeah, blue pill, red pill. Everyone knows. Come on. <laughs> Connect the dots, man. Where are you at? That's another thing that's kind of scary. It's just artificial intelligence. What? I just heard about a. Some sort of scientist, I forgot his name, you could probably look it up, that he thinks that by like 20 years from now, that personality, it will be downloadable. Like you can save your, per- like if you, like for instance, if your dog dies, you can download its personality and re-upload it into a clone of your dog. It'll be the same dog. That's not good. No. That's Who not. Who thinks these are good ideas? That's, well, they're, they're not good <laughs> ideas. Dude, the smartphone is proving to be a disastrous I- yeah. d- idea with, with kids. Yeah. There's like... They can't talk to each other. We they have, text each other, sit next to each other. Our So our generation and then the generation below us mm-hmm. has the highest rate of mental health issue in recorded history. Wow. Uh, it's uh, Michio Kaku. Sure. Yeah. Kaku believes the downloaded personality will be activated when a person dies, allowing their relatives to communicate with them via an avatar or a robot, assuming the relatives want to. No. Russian entrepreneur Dmitry Itzkov oh, fuck. is already at work on the idea with the Avatar 2045 project. Itzkov and his team are attempting to develop lifelike robotic company uh, copies of humans which the human brain can be downloaded into. What was the country that just gave citizenship to a robot? Uh, I think it was, was it Pakistan? It was Saudi Arabia. Somewhere like Saudi that, Arabia, they, It's I like think. the first in artificial intelligence that it like talks like a person. It gave a conference, like a speech, and was like looking at people and like, and they, it, they gave it like citizenship. That's so weird. I just hope I'm dead. <laughs> I just hope I'm dead before this goes. I don't think we're gonna get there. I think I think something's gonna happen, and and you know, I, how could we allow that to happen? Uh, well, that's the thing, I think, right? I think humanity is about to get a very intense haircut. <laughs> I I think that's that's gonna gonna happen. Things are changing. Did you see Drake? Mm-mm. to accost that dude from the stage like the rapper drake what he stopped the show and like accosted a dude for grabbing a girl which i think is wonderful but it's just weird that at a rap concert it's like even even the things that you think wouldn't be integrated with these new ideas are starting to like take out oh, it's just funny you see society change like that like he was like yo he's like touch her again and i'll come down there and i'll beat you up like it was awesome that's great yeah but it, you that's the last person you would think maybe drake but like you know, if like Little Wayne did something like that, you'd be like, whoa, it's like really taking a hold. Like people are really starting to pay attention to people's rights and stuff. It's crazy. Especially women. You yeah. Know? I mean, I think it's great. I really do. Uh, Cause I mean, look, like, look at this, for instance, I remember I used to say this all the time to my mom when I'd be in trouble. Like mom, I'd be like, dude, dude, mom, that's so gay. Like, that's like, we say it's all the time. She'd be like, dude, don't be gay. Come on. But now I could never imagine saying that because I understand. Cause I have, a lot of gay friends, I understand how that hurts people's feelings or how that they live, they, or maybe used to, maybe not anymore because society is different, but they've lived these lives of secrecy. And there's a lot of pain and a lot of hiding that has to go with that. It's something that I would never understand. And for me to just like throw out that like that, mm-hmm. there's so much behind that word that I will never understand. So it's weird for me. Like retarded. You can't say retarded anymore. You can't say gay. Yeah. You can't say tranny. Yeah. It's just funny how these rules, we all just understand we're like okay that's not acceptable anymore let's move on and i wonder yeah. what's like you're talking about this big haircut that we're going to be having i think what that is- i think that is that's 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 great 
Um, no, it's where I have a problem with it though is, and Canada does this a little bit. Um, they they legal uh, <clears throat> legally you can't. Uh, the, let me let me try and. Let me try and remember how this is. Canada is a wonderful place, but it is. It's fantastic. I love Canada. I oftentimes think about moving to Toronto. I Toronto would be British Columbia. Such an awesome city. Oh, such a beautiful city. I I only was there for like the warp tour, so I couldn't leave, but just looking at the city and Mm -hmm. just, just being there was just, it's, 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 it's very, very cool. And everyone in Canada is just so nice. Yeah, every person I yeah. ran into extremely, was extremely nice. polite, really nice, smiled. There was no, there was no douchebag in Canada. Yeah, and they're so, very, very sympathetic. Yeah, they're very. They have the kind of. With that on. said, I kind of take issue with you can be sued for calling someone a, a pronoun for which they don't like to be called and legally be sued for it. That's and in America, that you obviously can't, wouldn't you can't do wouldn't that, fly. Yeah can't do that so that's what that's why i was like okay let's if you're not even trying to offend them right like i could call you a motherfucker and you can't sue me i'm trying to offend you but if i was like ma'am i am a sir yeah i'm suing you be like oh well shit next time i'll just be like get out of the way it's a a little weird it gets a little weird when it so i'm all down for being polite and asking people to be polite and say excuse me call me by this that's totally fine to me i think when you start to Give it legal that's stuff. Awesome. That's when Just we start to on infringe on day. infringe on free speech, right? Yeah, because oh, we, for sure. that's the number one amendment. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah, I, I so I have uh, I have some opinions on this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think that what what's happening right now is is uh, is like like most things that kind of get to a fever pitch Mm -hmm. has an equal amount of pros and an equal amount of negatives and i think that the unfortunate america tends to handle stuff like this very poorly (laughs) in my opinion and what i mean by that is that we tend to in the process of being excited about liberating something Mm -hmm. we tend to kind we tend to imprison something else go way too hard in the process yeah. does that make sense that makes sense yeah and so the thing is is that um I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this um i i i think that yes there are you know, violations that have happened for a very long time against, against women that are very wrong and very inexcusable. And, and, and that stuff needs to be addressed and and taken care of. And, and, and it's not okay. And it never was okay. And I think that's a huge thing is that it never was okay. And that's an important thing. I, you know, I feel like people kind of have this sort of like, now we're finally saying it's not okay. It's like, no, it's always not been okay. Yeah. yeah. Like let's let's get that straight. Like we're not a <laughs> a nation that has that condones this and all of a sudden now we're going to change the law. I mean, this has always been illegal. It's always been inappropriate. It's always been you know, you're raised in, to know that this is not something that you do. Mm-hmm. But I do think that there are certain groups and segments of the population that when when stuff like this kind of hits a critical mass and there's sort of a fever pitch we have we we have to america always has to blame somebody there's mm-hmm. always got to be a fall guy and i think that that oftentimes is is sort of the tragedy of things you know what i mean and i think that we have to get to a point where i mean there the other thing too is that you know, to, to assume that what happens in the highest echelons of Hollywood somehow is a is a is is as much a part of kind of the rest of society, I think, is a little silly. You know what I mean? It's like I don't I, I, I you know, I, I think that a lot of that kind of taking advantage is due is 
of people is due to a high amount of money and success and, and the ability to power yeah. cover power and cover yourself and, 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 and sort of lord that over people like, Hey, I'm this guy and guess what? I can do whatever I want. Yeah. So I think that, you know, I think we'll always have that though. We will no always, matter, no matter what we will always have that, you know? And I, but I also think that this is going to be, you know, now we're in this kind of phase of, yeah, it's being exposed and we're getting the bad guys and, and, and we feel really good about it. Mm-hmm. But here's the problem. Part of getting the bad guys, it means there's going to be people that take a fall that probably aren't bad guys. Yeah. That, you know, that's going to well, be that's a, a, a part yeah, of this. Yeah, that's, it is. Because, uh, because that's it's a danger. at this point. You know, it's, so it's, it's a, a witch hunt. It's a full-on yeah. witch hunt right well, now. Like you'll Salem. get you'll get those, but I think as a whole, I think it's a good thing for 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 you know the Harvey Weinstein thing that's going on right sure, now. I think it's a great thing that people who are like him who haven't been caught yet, sure, and future people will look at back will or will look at this what's happening now and be like, I'm not going to do that. Because number one, that's wrong, and number two, you're not going to get away with it anymore. Yeah, right. I, and I would agree, but I, I think the tragedy of it is that Harvey's going to work it out, and it's he's going to he's he's being uh, not prosecuted, but there is a, an allegation of uh, of 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 actual there he's in being investigated for rape too, right? Which is legit. Yeah, like, that's abs- not absolutely. A, so and that that's that's that's. You know, definitely a different thing from sexual harassment. But, you know, I think it's you're also going to get a lot of stuff where you have people who consensually did things thinking it was going to alter their career and and people are going to get thrown under the bus that may not have done anything wrong. And and that's going to be a big part of it. And that's where this is going to get messy. And that kind of happy feeling we all have about exposing this stuff is going to is going to get tainted and and it's and it's very much the american way like this is how the media works and it's how hollywood works and it's how we as a society tend to process things and you know that that's just the we we're so poor at being moderate at anything you know we yeah. have to just uh, everything's this or that or this or that or this or that yeah. you know it's almost as if we have we're like it's black know. or white. It's like, it's like yeah, as a nation, there. it's almost like we're a walking extreme sport. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Do the deal. You can't <laughs> just play frisbee. We have to skydive into a swamp full of crocodiles. <laughs> That's what's fun, right? Yeah. You know? I don't know. Just, I think Japan's got y'all, uh, got America beat when it comes to those game, game shows. shows. Yeah, they're freaking <laughs> out of control. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's the funniest shit you'll ever watch in your life. Crazy. I've, I've, I've had... Hey. That's why we have American Ninja Warrior still popular now, but but at least it takes then, like skill and like fortitude and like you really had to try, not some just like girl getting pied in the face and then smacked in the back of the head with like a punch and <laughs> big old giant boxing glove. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> and then she gets thrown in a pool. Yeah. Breaks her neck and but, everyone's like, ah, yeah! she's like <laughs> drowning. So that's that's kind of my thing. Like I have a hard time getting excited about stuff like that because I you just know that there are going to be casualties and mm-hmm. that it, there it's not, you just look at it and you go, man, this is going to, yeah. And I, and I don't, I don't know. And, and it, and it's their thing too, for me, you know, it's like, I have a long memory. So I'm like, wait a minute. I thought we were worried about North Korea. No, well, we don't care about that. And that's, we're that's another, that's, now, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's such an American thing though. Right. It's like, we're going to get blown into the stone age. Wait a minute. They got Harvey. Yeah, yeah, Harvey. Let's get let's well, get Harvey. What about Kim Jong Un? Kim, uh, I mean, he's bad, but Harvey's really bad. You know, it's yeah. like we that's that's how we look at stuff, or that's how it to me it seems. Like. I mean, what with the you, Harvey thing though, it's it it was a, it was a systematic kind of thing. It was written in his in his contract. It was sexual harassment clauses that if he was dinged for a cl- if he was dinged for sexual harassment he owed the company money it's in the contract that he mm-hmm. signed with Miramax Interesting. and if that's not g- complicit then yeah. i don't know what is and the sad thing too like you said it's like a witch hunt right, right now once you're named regardless if it's true regardless if it's true or not you will that that taints your career forever right 
even if it's a complete lie, yeah. you'll always you'll be part of that era where we were trying to take down these celebrities for being creeps. And people aren't going to believe you. And half of you will believe you. Half of your fans won't. You're going to lose a lot of fans. You lose a lot of money. It could ruin your career, even if it's not true. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's, you know, and you've got, right, like, Ben Affleck <laughs> did something. And uh, Louis, C.K. Louis C.K. got all of his stuff yanked because, of, you know, I mean, it's all just. All that stuff, yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. There's just times where it feels like it's just. There's we got to put this we got to keep things moving and we got to keep selling stuff and and we got to keep people having opinion strong opinions and mm-hmm. so stuff just it just always seems there's like a certain placement you know yeah, what I mean can we just like chill can't like like one week just be like nothing really is happening can't we just like oh it's you know it's just there's it's trip. just such a weird thing you just look at it and you're like okay. October was the month of being all upset about Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. September was North Korea. November is Hollywood. Is Hollywood yeah. You know, what's and, December going to be? You yeah. know, and it just seems very, mm-hmm. you know. And then you have Facebook, which is which is a, a just a cesspool of of uninformed opinions being thrown around. You know, I mean that just and clickbait stories and. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like this. It's just, I don't know, man. It's this. It's all bad for your brain, and it's all bad for society. And it's just we're 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 edging ever closer to idiocracy when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you really do. You have to like when you open up your phone and you look now. Like they say, like the internet's wonderful because you have like access to incredible amounts of information. But now it's like it's almost like you it's double work because you have to now try to sit you get the information then you have to sit there and go okay what's real what's crap what am I going to choose to believe you have to like cite your sources now you can't just like take things as they come you have to be like oh, okay well just because my aunt Susan said this I guess it doesn't mean it's true I should go look at the story and then you look at the story and then you have to go down to the bottom of the page to see where the story was even cited from yeah like you can't just like take even a news story at, at face value anymore yeah it's crazy. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I struggle with it every, every I'm day, too. every time I catch I myself. At, I'm like, Oh my God, that's bullshit. And then I go, Oh wait, that's not real. I do it with, I do it with uh, political opinions too. I mm-hmm. go back and forth so much. It's ridiculous. Like I go back. Yeah. Federal regulation is a good thing. Oh wait, federal regulation is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And then I come back to this point where, you know what? Power corrupts period. It doesn't matter if you're a big business like Enron mm-hmm. or if you're a democratically controlled congress where they're all looking out for number one doesn't freaking matter i feel like this is a good time to introduce you guys to a great show what's it called house of cards (laughs) you may have heard of it yeah right okay so 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 if this doesn't before i tell you what this show is because you guys are going to be mega instant fans of this show it satisfies every urge i'm telling you um how weird is that right our political situation turns into House of Cards. Kevin Spacey takes a fall because of the accusations mm-hmm. in Hollywood. Right? right yeah. Can yeah, you believe yeah, that? Yeah. Would you have ever thought that that would spin around like that four years ago? No. no. That's pretty wild. Anyways, release the hounds. You all familiar? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Look it up. Release, release the, the hounds. hounds release called. the hounds. It's a British reality show. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that is um <laughs> I don't even know. It's a reality show it's though. A, it's a reality show. Is it one of those reality shows that we're going to look back like 5 years from now and be like, wow, Where that was pe- super fucked up. People dog. get chased down and attacked by dogs? Yes. Nice. There's Bu- uh, I'm looking at Bubbo the clown. Contains strong language. So there's a, a there, there's a reality. Tell me how, tell me how it is. You, you have to just for next time. You need to just okay, I'll look familiarize it yourself with, with this show. Release the it's house. based off of, so there's a British spinoff of Jersey shore called Gordy shore, which is like, oh my God. what is that even it, like? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's the craziest, most it's the, it's, Oh, 
it's it's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. It's like there's people like that in it's, in England, like in way worse. What? Anyways, on release, the hounds they oftentimes bring the contestants off of this reality show. Nice. And it just you have to research it. Just research it. I'm, I'm telling stoked. you, you're you're gonna immediately be like. Thank you. <laughs> Release the hounds. I'll put it in my notes right now. Thank you Release so much. Um, it, it's, it's it's your typical premise of, you know, you go through these things and then to to get the final prize, you have to like run this gauntlet, yes. which is dogs chasing you down. And and it's just like it, actual animal. Uh, dogs? Yeah. One hundred percent. You can't outrun a dog. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's great. Do they attack him and kill him? That'd be awesome. The, no, but they they attack him. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. It's really it's really great. You just get into that. I wonder if we're ever gonna go back to as as a society to like Coliseum stuff. Because I know that's why people hated the UFC for so long. They're like, this is barbaric and setting this back like hundreds of years. Dude, I love the UFC. I do too. I love it. I think I think as humans, I think UFC is very healthy. Yeah, I don't I think agree. it's a negative thing. I, well, it's going to be negative for the fighters once you know CTE kicks in and they start slurring their but words. But I'm talking about: Are we going to go back to like, okay, now you've got two guys in a cage and there's like a bat with razor wire and then there's a, a sword? Are we going to go that hard? No, you ever I, don't, I don't I, think. I, I would love to see. You know, one of the things I loved about the Coliseum was the involvement of predatory animals. <sighs> Like a bear, <laughs> like a dude. I mean, and a bear. Like, and it's, right, like they would fill it with water sometimes. Yeah, and have shit. That's all. <laughs> they were so. They were the <laughs> ultimate showmen. Yeah, they were so ahead of the game. I, would I mean, pay like, anything to see something like that. And no, that ship battle. <laughs> yeah, well, or what's what's in you know, what's amazing too is that, you know, people got killed who were in the audience with these things like, yeah. like things fucked up man it wasn't just because you showed up didn't mean you yeah. were gonna leave yeah the lion could jump over the fence yeah, yeah. lions would eat people you know a stray arrow would go flying you know i mean all kinds of stuff happened but that's awesome i mean great two dudes are like doing jujitsu and somebody gets all beat up whatever forget it bring me a grizzly bear yeah let's see a dude fight wound. a grizzly bear yeah yeah not only that but wound <laughs> Remember, remember our buddy Trevor? Our buddy Trevor. I still to this day. I've insists, never been so angry in my life. Insists that prime Mike Tyson could beat up a grizzly bear. Oh come on! <laughs> Who is this fucking he, guy? No, no, he says that Mike Tyson's punch would knock a grizzly bear out. And I said, do you realize that it takes a fifty caliber bullet to break a bear's skull? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Mike Tyson can't punch as hard as a twenty-two caliber bullet. <laughs> What's your argument? <laughs> yeah, it's completely, it's completely asinine. He was like, it was, he was as sure as the sky was blue. Was, and, and we're sitting here going, we, we call them moose. We're like, I haven't, honestly, I, I don't know if I've ever been so heated in an argument over something so stupid in my life. I was like, you are a fucking idiot. That You're a like, moron. You're yeah, a moron. I mean, like, it's, don't reproduce. Don't do it. He did have a pretty strong punch, though. Not enough to kill a grizzly, grizzly bear, dude. It's, it's not enough to kill a man. He's yeah, never, he killed never killed a anyone. Single could, it's not. It's not even <laughs> a question. It's. I hope you're listening to this, you asshole. It's, <laughs> I don't even know you, and I think you're a moron. Yeah, you gotta send this. I don't to even him. know you. I don't know what you look like. I don't know anything <laughs> Just about you. I'm asshole. fucking pissed off at you. He's a great guy. No, he's Come the best. He really is the best. I love but still, him. But that, that whole little argument was <laughs> so funny. I just. I think after a while, he just, he stuck to that just point to be because it, just to be funny. Like I felt my brain melting down my spinal cord when he said that. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, it's, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's like when somebody asks you, you know, Beatles or Stones, it's like, I don't know, but you should be turned into sausage because that's a stupid fucking question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's so like, many don't, in don't insult everything that exists because of your dumb question but mm -hmm. i'm yeah i'm all for i don't know man that's just like that would be so cool to just i mean i i'd do it i'd watch somebody fight a bear yeah like if they if they willingly wanted to do it not if they're forced obviously that'd be sad i don't i don't know why we don't I, like what if you know let's 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 that's how we clean up the prison prison system. That's what we do. 
instead of lethal injection, uh, like a person. No, not might. not even. Yeah. You don't want to serve twenty years. Get in here. Is it serve twenty years or fight a bear? Yeah. Come on. What if, what if he fights the bear and wins? Does he get his freedom? Yes, of course. He yeah, fought he a bear. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't you can't deny that. It's like, all right, man, you're 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 free. You 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 won. <laughs> yeah, like what, I'm not going to stop you. You just I'll tell you what. Though, I'll tell you what. Though, the honest God truth. You know what would make that 100 percent not ever actually happen? Hmm. The NFL. Football goes out the window if now you can show up to the stadium and watch a bear fight. That's really true. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. It, I don't know. We still have a thing against blood, though, I think. Because that's UFC what... UFC is so bloody, though. Yeah, and that's why it took so long for the UFC to finally get... Because they had that moniker labeled on them in the early in the early days, and they were banned in a lot of states. Well, there was New no York, rules in the beginning. Yeah, New York... Just recently, in the last five years, lift that ban. In the last five or ten years. Which is crazy, considering how old that UFC is now. But And New York seems like a tough city. Right? Like, but it's a, it's Interesting a very... Interesting fun fact about New York. Crime is down at its lowest in New York City currently since the 1950s. Why? Why? <laughs> Video games. Yeah. Getting people inside. <laughs> Fucking way too distracted to kill. Well, violence is down. Then we need to start giving Xbox One to the south side of Chicago because <laughs> there's a lot yeah, of Yeah, Chicago still is, yeah. is crazy. Just, just start That's tossing but, cars. Uh, yeah. MacBooks but, that are prepaid. Yeah, yeah. Just go. Violence is down as a, uh, as a whole, you know, just in the country. Yeah, but New York City is looking at under 300 murders for 2017. That's pretty crazy. It's, Good for them. There's 300 murders like an hour in Chicago. <laughs> pretty bad yeah chicago's I, I don't know a whole lot about it but it's it's kind of getting it's totally well uh, i get uh, emergency uh, out of control yeah they, have level. A sh- they call it the shot clock they have they, they, they split up a clock based on like minutes to like i think it's like every 12 minutes someone's shot there's a gun violence like a, a, a violence committed with a gun whether it's like a robbery and it's like every half hour someone's shot and then every hour someone dies from a gun so, or every 12 hours, someone see, dies and that's another again, yeah. great See, Yeah. This is another great avenue in which you insert grizzly bears and tigers. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, you can't behave in your neighborhood. Yeah. Well, guess, what? guess what? It's now a bear habitat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. And the tigers, we have tigers too. Yeah, and yeah. the bears and the tigers don't get along. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, yet I, I'm just, I don't know. I feel like that stuff would be, would be interesting. That PETA would never let that happen. <laughs> PETA. PETA. The, the, what is it? P-E-T-A. Yeah. The, uh, something of something, something, something. <laughs> oh, yeah, people absolutely. For the ethi- people for the ethical, ethical treatment, treatment of animals. animals. That's what it stands for. Yeah. I'm such a jerk. Every time I think of PETA, I autumn, I, am, I, <laughs> I imagine like a delicious euro. <laughs> <laughs> which is not, which, why didn't they think of that? When they decided to name their organization PETA, <laughs> and all I want is lamb. <laughs> you, you, this is a true story. I'm not making this up. So years ago, a buddy of mine, uh, his his sister is very heavily involved in PETA, right? And I, not being terribly, you know, PETA is very conf, con, uh, controversial. Yeah, there's there's a lot. They do a lot of controversial uh, things in they, order to get their point across. Yeah, it's it's it, again kind of what we were talking about with what's going on currently. You know what I mean? It's like they just going, go too hard, go so far yeah. in one direction, you be, you kind of become the the monster in certain aspects. Mm-hmm. And she's all involved in PETA, and we're hanging out, and and I didn't know anything about PETA, and I didn't know she was involved in it, and she was kind of talking about it. And I very naively was like, it's like, Oh, pita, like pita bread. That's a good idea. We should get, we, we should do that. We should go get, we should get, is there, a, uh, let's get euros. Let's go do that. And I had this whole like conversation about it, not realizing that it was, you know, and, and, and she was just, really offended like it, it became like a whole thing like she thought I, you were like trolling her or? she she thought i was making fun of her like truly making fun of it and and i and i she even like reprimanded me and she's like don't you know what the, and i'm like i i don't know what PETA is i just i thought like it's yeah. you said PETA, and i'm hungry so. like we're hanging out and it's like about lunchtime i just i don't i ah 
it was it was it was kind of crazy. She was really mad. I had to well, apologize, uh, and I like had to go research what PETA was and like what is this and. Well, you know what? It goes back to that. You said something when we had a conversation about. Uh, I forget what we were talking about, but you just said, "Just don't be mean." Well, yeah, regardless we of talk. whether you're on the right side of the argument, don't yeah, be just, an asshole. Yeah, that's it's really simple. It's it's really simple. Even if you're right, yeah. just don't yell at somebody. Don't scream at somebody. If you have a point that's opposite of theirs. Can you just have a calm conversation and treat them like a human being? Yeah, yeah. I, I apologize that my experience with that word entails tasty Greek sandwich. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. like, fuck off! What do you want me to do? You know. And then, so then, of course, I went and researched this, and you know, and she was very active in it and had participated in some things that were obviously questionable. And it's like, oh well, I, you know, this is kind of. I don't know if I agree with all of this. This is a little, a little much, but you know, I don't, I don't know. No, no animals were harmed in the creation of your of euro meat. I don't, you know, so. If you're not a vegan and you're part of PETA, I wonder if they have like a class system. They're like, they like vegetarians, they accept them, but they still get pissed that they take the bees, honey and the chickens eggs. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Cause like full veganism is like, what I feel like would go with what PETA is like. Nothing's harmed, but don't they understand that? Plants have a very, very highly evolved, deep-rooted form of communication with each other. Yeah, they do. They just came out just in the last 10 years. They, we realized that trees, in fact, have some form of communication with yeah, one another. That's life. Their life. Why is it okay to like... To the point where if uh, in the forest, I forget where they did this experiment, but in the forest, if one neighboring tree is being eaten by this insect the other tree will change its chemical op, uh, composition to make it like a poison or make it taste different. So when that same insect comes to that tree and starts biting, it won't anymore because it's like, ew, gross, and then it'll go away. That's communication. No. That's, yeah. But, and, that, <laughs> and very selfish. Because that tree could have helped the other tree, but instead he changed his own chem- <laughs> I'm not gonna get eaten. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Joe's my, dad. My, my root, <laughs> I've got like really deep roots. Like, yeah. what do you want me to fucking do about yeah. this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's super fascinating, though, man. That's that's heavy stuff. Which makes which, which in and that, like, uh, what's going to happen? Changes how you feel when you're walking through a forest. Yeah, or like peeing well, on a tree. Yes. Or See, what, now you what, can't what, pee on a tree. It, it, that's a problem with this shit. Yeah. 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 It's like, look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stop peeing on things. Yeah, no, that's your God-given right. I'll mm-hmm. pee on anything. Mm. I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> Go on. I don't know. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, above the age of 18. Yeah. <laughs> don't bust an R. Kelly. And- don't write. <laughs> Be careful, man. A lot of things are up for grabs now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah do, do, yeah, do you think you can... I, but, but in 20 years, what is that going to look like for veganism? If we start to really research it and realize that, oh, trees are freaking smart. They're intelli- they have some form yeah. of intelligence. Just because they can't scream doesn't mean they don't feel it. Right. Yeah, if plants could scream, could you imagine? Could you imagine? We, yeah, we wouldn't be eating plants. It'd be plants. so loud outside during a storm. Ah! Trying to sleep at night. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Damn well a tree. It's like 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 pruning your yard becomes this like super traumatic, painful experience. You're like, oh my god, I'm killing everything. The sap is their blood, you finally realize they're just bleeding, it cut his arm off like I'm sorry. I'm so you sorry. were in the way of the power line. I had to do this. Only you can prevent yeah. t- tree death, which technically makes a woodpecker an animal, like a like a like a predator, a, a monster. Yeah, and Peta protects the woodpecker. Yeah. So now what, Peta? Yeah. See that's yeah. see. Okay. So now this gets really tricky because that makes a woodpecker the fucking serial killer killer of mm-hmm. the of the avian world. Yeah, because they don't stop. Yeah. Or horses. And it's horses a, eat grass. Yeah. How do you mow your lawn now? Yeah. You murderer. You freaking murderer. <laughs> you know, how do you how do you harvest wheat? My well, God. Technically, yeah. technically, you're not murdering the grass. You're just cutting its hair because it grows back. Mm, that's true. Interesting. So you, you know, basically, you're giving the ground a haircut. Yeah. 
Mm. And I'm not, and it, even if I take a branch off a tree, that branch will eventually grow back. The longer I live, the more things that I thought were fantasy in Lord of the Rings are not fantasy yeah. anymore. If someone yeah. were to tune into this podcast right now, <laughs> they would think we were like on the biggest acid trip we've ever. Yeah, we're just cutting the grass. We're just cutting the ground's hair, dude. We're just. We're just <laughs> you got to be careful, man, when you're cutting your trees, you know, because because yeah. they, they, they like cry loudly. Oh, wow. That's what I, that's it. I'm, I'll, so I'll be 32 on the 29th of this month. And nice. th- that's my takeaway from three decades of existence is the longer I live, the more things come true in Lord of the Rings. Yep. That's, that's where I'm at. Mm. That's where I'm at, guys. I like that. Well, you know, like in Iceland and stuff, like they, that's like part of their culture. They really believe that fairies and trolls exist. Yeah. And Ireland has laws about fairies. Yeah. You can't like step on certain things. Yeah. Because those are like, those are like it. troll houses. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm all about that though, man. I mean, like I would love to be roaming through the woods and stumble upon some trolls, you know? So cool. I mean, that would be, you know, I don't know whether Shane's told you, but I'm heavily into Sasquatch and cryptozoology right. and things like that. Uh, are you, are a, you a believer? Heavily. Nice. Yes, absolutely. 100%. I didn't know you were a true believer. Wow. I'm 100% a true believer. What I makes you that. believe that it, that it, that it exists? The like, what, what, what was the, the evidence? Yeah. That's because I, I've seen all like a bunch of documentaries. I think it's super interesting too, but what was the one thing that you were like, this is undeniable? Well, there's a lot of things, but after you guys both agreed that trees <laughs> can communicate with each other 30 seconds ago, I don't think, <laughs> believe, <All that's> <laughs> I don't think, I don't think believing in the existence Dude, of an come upright. On, you really think that there's a giant monkey that walks around by trees. They talk. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Whatever, fucking, dude, this guy's crazy. You're totally insane, man. Like, there's no way Sasquatch exists. Yeah, no, the trees uh, communicate with each other, and you've got the, there's the fairies in, in yeah. Dublin, and, you know, so that's all real, but a fucking upright bipedal ape in North America, yeah, you're yeah, fucking nuts. You're insane, dude. You know? Who is this I mean, guy? come on. Listen, if, if you accept that Putin and Trump are real people, mm-hmm. like, it's just, I'm sorry, you know? I or mean, are they shape shifting reptilians? Ooh, there's that one. Well, okay, so I'm also heavily into the reptilian, <laughs> yeah. David Icke. Yep. Icke. Yeah, I'm, I'm, inner earth i'm all over oh, it dude. um yeah <laughs> so good i'm 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 that guy yeah i love I'm it i'm 100 that guy i mean honest i i'm i'm a true believer that anything's possible really i like i, I honestly maybe maybe not anything's possible but i truly don't know that's my stance on life Appar- i don't know apparently billy corgan had witnessed yeah. someone shape shift and they yep. mentioned it at the tail end of that I podcast why did they start with that well, well he won't he Rogan? won't he won't discuss it openly i know Whoa, well, Corgan he'll... witnessed a shape shift yeah. at the very end of. And by the way, this podcast was incredible. About Wait. if you're in the music industry, like yeah, it's a fantastic. You podcast. get to see the different side of the industry that he went through as like an artist is super informative. On Joe Rogan, he just did it like a couple days ago. It was Billy Corgan? Was it a bunch of totally off the wall, fucked up shit? No, no, it's no. Awesome. I, we all think Billy Corgan is a little weirdo. Yeah, and. He's a genius, though. He's incredibly intelligent. It was mostly about being an artist and like... And he has the worst voice in history that somehow is also the best That's voice right. in I history. Know. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It's, it's actually really humbling because he, he, he actually talks about his insecurities as being an artist. Like what every artist actually goes through, but like the big ones don't talk about because they like believe their own hype. But he doesn't believe his own hype. He's like, he's like, yeah, there was years where I was like... Where did my number one power go? Like, I can't write a hit anymore. Like, what's going on? Like, he's just very honest about his career. It's really cool. Yeah. And then at the very end, drops the bomb. Jorgen's like, so I read somewhere that you actually saw someone shapeshift. He goes, yeah, absolutely. I can't talk about that on there, but we'll talk about that. And Joe Rogan was like, all right, podcast over. I want to hear about this. And they just like, so. he's writing a book right now. But yeah, he, he's gonna he's gonna talk about it in a, in his book, right? Yeah. Is that what he's? Okay. Yeah, but just so nonchalantly. Like, well, there's, oh, yeah. there's so there's also. Um, you know, there's the whole reptilian thing and the mm-hmm. kind of, um, I mean, I, I, I've done an extensive amount of research and all of that stuff. Um, that rabbit hole is very deep. Yeah, it, it goes very it's deep. Super, it's I'm super, surprised you climbed out. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. Did you leave a trail I didn't. of crumbs? I didn't. Find I, didn't. I, didn't. I didn't. This is so fucked up that you guys actually jumped into the rabbit hole yeah. circle of this <laughs> podcast. I'm, I, I didn't come to you. You guys came yeah. to me. We followed your trail. We're about to go have snacks with Alice. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. We're, we're deep in the rabbit yeah. hole. Um, so I guess as, as far as 
Sas- Sasquatch goes, yeah, right? Because reptilians and shapeshifters and all this. Do you want to hear about Sasquatches? Yeah, yeah. Are you, go for it. Are you I'm, into that? I'm honestly really genuinely yeah. curious about it. So here's here's the thing. If if you just sort of take what you what you know to believe, right? Mm. Just the everyday things that are going on, right? If you just like look at the world and you go, okay, well, this is all really crazy. To me, the belief in something like Sasquatch is actually infinitely less drastic than just looking at the current condition of the universe. And then if you take it one step further, you realize that when you're talking about a Sasquatch, you're, you're, you're talking about an animal that lives and breathes and it breeds and has mates and, and it's just like any other animal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And... The reality of it is, is that from a, a biological scientific standpoint, all you're really talking about is a very large upright ape. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, which if you believe what I believe, I would fall under that classification. Right. Of being an upright ape. Yeah. Just different because you've evolved to not need. All the hair and sure, sure. I, I guess, yeah. But the thing is, is that we there's obviously substantial populations of these creatures, and they're obviously highly intelligent. But people see them all the time, and people have seen them for ever. They're a, a huge part of the entire Native American record, and they're mentioned. Um, I mean, even you know, I'm I. I believe, and I believe we know factually now that the Vikings were the first people to make their way to North America. And if you look at that part of the world, it, it, it's a very easy stretch to make, especially in that time. Um, and even in flying to Finland, you would you take the same route that the Vikings would have actually taken. Even to this day, we still don't fly over the open ocean. We cling through Greenland and Iceland and then go into Scandinavia. Mm-hmm. And... Um, but these, the concept of these animals is in the historic record for a thousand years. And I also believe that there's there 100% that our, our government and a certain amount of scientists are aware of them. And there's a reason why it's not an open thing. There's a reason why it's not an obvious, hey, a Bigfoot was discovered. And and that is because humans are awful. Imagine what we would do if that was a thing. Think we about trap what, it and think, dissect it and figure. Out yeah, what or we, you know, we would overrun the forests and we would try and put them in zoos and we would do horrible things. We're not capable of handling that information. We aren't capable as a species mm. of properly addressing and handling something that could be so close to our own species. Yeah. We're able to look at a monkey, right, a, a chimpanzee or a gorilla, and go. Another interesting thing too: silverback gorillas were thought to be extinct until the early 1900s. They were discovered. It's true. That is very um, true. And and that again was a thing. Hundred years ago, it was like the myth of this large ape that could walk upright. Um, but we wouldn't. I mean, you have to look at what we do, what humans do. Yeah. We discover this amazing animal and then we k- practically kill every single one of them. And then we throw to them it, yeah. and then we throw them in a zoo and kill a bunch more of them because they can't procreate in captivity very well. And, you yeah. know, I mean, there's a whole doc. There's a, the mountain gorillas. There's a famous documentary on Netflix right now. There's this whole police force that's been put together to try and stop people from killing these animals. Mm hmm. Think about it. If if it really, that's that's the kind of astounding thing about it is that this isn't something that's going to come to light. It's not. You and I are never going to have a conversation where they all of a sudden come out and go, "We have verifiable proof and evidence of Bigfoot." There is one, and you look at me and go, "You're right. You were right, dude." There they are. That'll never happen. Yeah. Because most people aren't going to be enlightened like the three of us are about it, and go. Wow, that's really cool. That's amazing Let that there's there's the, there's a forest. There's there's this creature out there that is somewhere between us and this and a forest people and whatever. Mm-hmm. 
forget it. Well, think about the ocean. Like, there's so much of that that we will never get to see. I'm never going to see all of the forest of America. How do I know what's out there? I have no freaking idea. Mm -hmm. I'm going to my house after this. The oceans. Yeah. The oceans scare me. Yeah. Ocean is terrifying, you know, but you, I don't, you know as well as I do, being touring musicians and having crisscrossed this country super, you know, many times and all weather and everything else. And, you know, I've been to an astounding amount of places that are extremely rural. There's, there, I mean, there's no doubt that these, these animals exist Mm -hmm. and that there are, you know, they're smart enough to stay out of our way. And, and I think they understand us very well. And they have a, they have a, a very, very healthy fear of us. And, and because of their intelligence, they're able to, they're not, they're able to not engage, but there's make no mistake, you know, the, the, the higher ups of the park service, military, the government, you know, whatever organizations you want to call it, we're aware of them. We know they exist and it's, it's gonna, it's gonna stay that way. What's a good documentary to watch? What's your, what's your favorite? Um, there, well, the, the documentaries are all nonsense. Like you don't, that that's just, the, you have to stop and I'm not saying you're doing this, but it's like, you have to stop treating it as if it's a supernatural like, like, thing ooh, like Loch Ness monsters and you have to look at it from a, from a biological zoological standpoint. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, it makes a lot of sense. It, I mean, it, it, it makes more sense that there would be creatures like this than there wouldn't be in the Go ahead. No, no, go on. Uh, on. I I gotta get out of here soon. Okay, cool. So me too. Um, so YouTube, there's a guy, there's a guy who has a channel called Utah Bigfoot. And that's my favorite because he, explains kind of out in the field sort of what's happening and what to look for and what you know approaches it from a purely analytical kind of and and he's an amateur guy it's not like he's some sort of zoologist you know but it once you look at his stuff and you kind of see what's going on you'll realize like okay yeah like this is this is a thing you know Right on. Well, I'll take. I'll take on that note. I'll take that into consideration. Check that out. <laughs> go, let's go hunt. Let's, let's go, go hunt. hunting. Yeah, squatching. Squatching. That's the call. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming out. Hey, I'll thank you. Doing the podcast yet again, and I'll, we'll do it again sometime in the near future. Yeah. Smooches. Okay. <laughs>